What's going on, Vinyl community? Welcome to another video with The Record Spinner. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a vinyl haul showcasing all of the records that I acquired within the month of July this year in 2020. But before we get into the haul, you're probably wondering, what exactly is this behind me that you see? If you follow me on social media, you know all about this. But to those that don't, on July 20th, my girlfriend and I celebrated our fourth anniversary together. Uh, my girlfriend, Samantha, has appeared on numerous videos on my channel. She's appeared in several record store vlogs. Uh, we do the Recall That Memory segment. She was in my record store road trip video that I posted recently. Uh, she is just absolutely amazing. She has my heart completely, and she is just the best girlfriend ever. And for every year, uh, we give each other little gifts. And for this year, she gave me my very own YouTube play button plaque. Now, to those that are not aware, YouTube does this thing called the play button award for any um, account that surpasses a certain uh, subscriber milestone. So I believe it starts at like 100,000, then it goes to a million, and so on and so forth. Now, personally, I don't think I'll ever hit 100,000 subs, but until then, this is going to do me just well. And it says right here, presented to the record spinner for passing 1,000 subscribers. And of course, I hit 1,000 subscribers earlier this year, which was an absolute huge milestone for me. And I can gladly um, display this in my vinyl listening room. So thank you very much, Samantha. Love you very much. And this month was an absolutely fantastic month for vinyl finds. Um, I must say, I kind of slipped back into my old buying habits. Um, I found myself buying a lot more than I expected to this month. Uh, there was just a lot of notable new releases that came out, a lot of new reissues. So that's a big portion of this haul. But aside from that, there are some really cool notable things, such as my first 45 RPM MoFi pressing, some free records from You Discover Music, original music from the vinyl guru herself, the latest Third Man Records uh, vault package, as well as some more Beach Boys finds. It's about to go deep, so enough of the chit-chat. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the latest finds. All right, so we are going to kick this haul off basically where I left off at in my June vinyl haul video where I mentioned that I was going to be getting uh, more of the Beach Boys Analog Productions pressings. And sure enough, those are the first records that arrive for this month, and that's what I'm going to be showing you guys. Um, I got each of these records for $25 each, which is an absolutely unbeatable price considering that they go for $10 more than that price. I don't know if maybe Acoustic Sounds is trying to get these out of their inventory or they might be discontinuing them. Who really knows? But for that price, you really cannot beat it. First up, we have Shutdown Volume 2. This, of course, features Fun, Fun, Fun. Um, we also have some really awesome songs on here, such as The Warmth of the Sun, uh, one of my personal favorites, Don't Worry Baby, Why Do Fools Fall in Love, Keep an Eye on Summer, um, and then, of course, Denny's Drums, which is uh, Dennis Wilson's little drum solo spotlight on, on a record. Uh, very nice, glossy sleeve here. Absolutely nice matte finish to the back. And uh, I don't know about you guys, if there's anyone watching that collects these Analog Productions Beach Boys pressings, I cut these little hype stickers out because I would never dare to kind of try to peel them off of the loose kind of shrink bag that they come in. But these are just really cool to have. It kind of breaks down everything here. And then, of course, as usual, I'm not going to showcase everything because you probably have seen them before. We get the usual insert talking about the reissues as well as a nice little catalog. Rice paper sleeves with the quality record pressings logo on the inner bag, which obviously means that it was pressed there. Nice capital rainbow label there. Now, this is the stereo mix, uh, which basically was created digitally, and then the mix was transferred to tape, and then the tape was made to um, cut the lacquers. So it is analog, but there is some slight digital, you know, stuff going on, but it's going to sound great, and it doesn't matter. And then the other record that I got is Beach Boys Party, which is a very much like almost like an at home kind of record uh, for the Beach Boys. It's almost as if you're like a fly on the wall during one of their recording sessions or rehearsals. Um, very, very loose kind of album because you have them doing covers of Beatles tunes such as I Should Have Known Better, Tell Me Why, and You've Gotta Hide Your Love Away. And then there's things such as uh, Papa Umau Mau, uh, which actually appears on the Beach Boys concert live album. Uh, there's a medley of I Get Around and Little Deuce Coop. 
um, a rendition of Bob Dylan's uh, The Times They Are a Changin', as well as the big notable highlight slash hit off of this, and that is Barbara Ann, which was a pretty big hit single for them, and it's also a concert staple. Uh, comes in a nice colorful uh, sleeve full of photos, nice skate fold there. And then as always, we have the insert in here, but no Analog Productions catalog as well. And here is the vinyl itself, which looks absolutely sharp. And uh, I gotta say, I've been getting these at a very fast pace and I still have some ways to go. There's still a lot more I need to get my hands on, but sure enough, the collection will be complete at some point and I cannot wait because these pressings are absolutely fantastic. Guys, this train just never stops. More Beach Boys Analog Productions pressings. Acoustic Sounds did a 4th of July 15% off sale. And of course, I simply couldn't resist. And it was a prime time to stock up on even more titles to round off the collection. Starting with the Beach Boys today. Now, this album marked a real change within the band. Because everything prior to this was all surf and fun and they were really honing in on that image for some time and then with this album you almost sensed the sense of maturity within the band and what was going to follow afterwards uh, with tracks such as when i grow up uh please let me wonder i'm so young kiss me baby and then there's also some rather um fun tracks on here such as do you want to dance 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 as well as an early version of help me Rhonda." you guys all know what these pressings entail you know the capital labels 200 gram vinyl all analog mastering from the mono tapes and all the inserts and such so i'm not going to pull everything out if anything you guys all know what these things look like and then we got summer days and summer nights and of course the two big knockout tracks on this album are uh, california girls and help me Rhonda. the familiar version is on this album and then we have some other tracks on here such as the girl from new york city Amusement Parks USA, Then I Kissed Her, Let Him Run Wild, You're So Good to Me, all kinds of great stuff. And um, honestly, there is no other better time in the year to stock up on Beach Boys albums than now because the Beach Boys in summer, they go hand in hand. And I'm going to be having a blast listening to these pressings as well as the other ones that I just showed you. And up next is actually a first for me. Um, I do not have any pressings of this sort by this particular label, and I got it for a very good price, as I will explain. Billy Joel, Songs in the Attic. Of course, this is the Mobile Fidelity Sound Lab pressing, but this right here is a 45 RPM MoFi pressing, and I do not have any 45 RPM MoFi pressings in my collection, so this is indeed a first. Uh, this is a live album, uh, which was done back in 1980, 1981, uh, which features tracks that were predominantly featured on albums starting from Cold Spring Harbor up until Turnstiles. So this was right before uh, Billy had released The Stranger and he just broke out completely with that record. So it's a nice emphasis on those early tracks with things such as Miami 2017, Summer Highland Falls, um, Street Life Serenader, uh, Say Goodbye to Hollywood, Captain Jack, Ballad of Billy the Kid, all those great tracks. Here's the backside and of course my copy is also numbered, and my copy is number 1,310. We have a nice photo collage in the gatefold with a very young-looking Billy right there, all kinds of old photographs. And then, of course, we also have some other goodies in here. We have a, another insert, which came with the original album. There's another old picture of Billy there. Inside, we have lyrics and liner notes and whatnot and there's a more up-to-date photo of him and of course we have the advertisements for mofi giving you more prime examples of how to spend your hard-earned money and then of course the records themselves come in the rice paper mofi sleeves as always pressed on heavyweight 180 gram vinyl pressed at rti this was also mastered by craig wunderlich and uh, comes with a nice custom MoFi label as well. 
Um, I cannot wait to play this. Um, I am quite excited to see how MoFi works their magic with 45 RPM pressings. I don't normally go to them often simply because it's the whole ordeal of flipping the record over, you know, more than you normally would with just a single LP. But then again, I totally get the notion of the sound quality being so amazing. And if anything, that's going to be the big draw for me when it comes to this pressing. And who knows, maybe I'll seek out some of the other two L uh, LP uh, versions of albums that MoFi has done. And then I got this uh, with my Discover Cashback bonus on Amazon. Um, so I basically paid nothing for it. And also I did not have it in my collection and it's basically a hole in my ACDC collection. And I figured I would just get this for the sake of filling in that gap. And that is 1985's Fly on the Wall. Now, not a lot of people really talk about this record. Um, a lot of the 80s ACDC albums tend to fall under the radar. Perhaps it's the overshadow, uh, the shadowing of like Back in Black and For Those About to Rock. Or is it simply the case that like they just kind of had this just weird period where they were still active, but just the records didn't really catch on. Uh, but what I do remember is that there is a five music video kind of video EP of five tracks from this album. There's a bit of a narrative that goes on uh, within the video and they did um, five music videos for this record. Uh, some of the notable highlights on here are um, the title track, Shaker Foundations, and Sink the Pink. Um, it's actually been a long time since I listened to this album, so uh, this will be a, a bit of a uh, refresher. We have a nice uh, printed inner sleeve uh, with various photos and liner notes, just like all the other ACDC reissues. Comes on the nice custom label that has drawn all the reissues. Pressed at United, mastered by Ray Janos. These sound absolutely amazing. Digitally remastered as well by uh, George Marino. So they use digital files and then they just cut the lacquers. And these sound absolutely wonderful. And I uh, definitely cannot wait to revisit this record. Because like I said, it's definitely been a while since I last played it. And there we go. Good stuff. ACDC, Fly on the Wall. All right, so here is another record that I got with my Discover Cashback bonus points. Uh, this came in a separate shipment today, and that is Pisces, Aquarius, Capricorn, and Jones Limited by The Monkees. This is their fourth album right here, and this features the band kind of going in a more psychedelic direction, which I really dig. Uh, this features tracks such as uh, Words, which is one of my personal favorites, uh, what Am I Doing Hanging Round, Pleasant Valley Sunday, everyone knows that tune, Star Collector, and then what's cool with uh, this pressing, like all of the other uh, Monkeys reissues that were put out by Sundazed, is that they include some bonus cuts sometimes at the end of uh, whichever side, whether it's side one or side two. And on this album, we have a alternate mix at the end of side one of the track Going Down, which... I believe was either a single or a B-side from this period. So that's cool that they included it here. Faithful reproduction of the album sleeve. And then the record itself kind of comes with a modified version of the old Cold Gems label. Obviously, it would say it right here. But depending on which label puts out a Monkees record, um, they'll change it. So in this case, Sundazed uh, put their name on it. And sometimes Rhino does as well. I've seen that. But it comes on the Cold Gems Sundays label. And uh, yeah, this is one that I've been wanting to get for some time. It's kind of a gap in my monkeys collection, and I'm uh, certainly excited to give it a spin. Pisces, Aquarius, Capricorn, and Jones Limited by the Monkeys. All right, so I was away from home this past weekend, and when I came back today, I realized that over the course of the weekend, a whole bunch of records got delivered. So we have a lot of ground to cover in this particular clip. Starting off with a record that I had actually pre-ordered months and months back. It just came out finally this month uh, in the U.S., but it got its initial release over in the U.K. last month in June. Um, I had initially pre-ordered this off of the artist's web store, and it was going to be signed by the artist himself. But I ended up canceling that order because basically when I placed the order, it was kind of on impulse because it wasn't listed anywhere else. Kind of waited a little bit and I saw it starting to pop up on Amazon, Bull Moose, and other sites. And the difference in prices between getting it locally within the States and paying out the wazoo and shipping costs from getting it from the UK, um, it was a notable difference. So I ended up saving myself some money. And sure, one may think that it was a missed opportunity that my copy is not signed. But you know what? 
it's all going to be fine because the next time that he tours the US, I will see him, I will get a meet and greet package, he will sign my album, and it's a win-win for me. Now, I am excited to dig back into this release. Now, this is not a whole new release. This actually first came out on CD, DVD, and Blu-ray back in 2014. So this is the first time that it's been given the vinyl treatment. And this is the first live album of sorts to be given the vinyl treatment by this particular guy. Um, I have a lot of sentimental value uh, towards this particular release. Not so much the sh particular show recorded, but just the whole touring cycle. And coincidentally... It is by the individual that is listed on my shirt, and that is Mr. Steve Hackett. Uh, Genesis Revisited live at the Royal Albert Hall, and of course, Steve Hackett was the guitarist of Genesis. And for many, many years, uh, even still to this day, uh, him and his backing band do uh, reworkings of the classic Genesis stuff that he was a part of, particularly from the years 1971 to 1977 so it's stuff that the real diehard fans can really sink their teeth into for all the old school prog fans who adore those early genesis records steve hackett is giving them what they want and i applaud the man greatly for that uh this was recorded at the world famous royal albert hall in london back in october of 2013 which was a whole month before I would see Steve Hackett live for the first time in November. And ever since then, I have seen Steve live, I want to say maybe 10 times or more. It's a case where anytime he comes around the area, my family and I are there. If it's multiple nights, we are there multiple nights. We'll go to different cities, we'll travel across state lines to see him. The whole nine yards. And um, I've met Steve many, many times. He has signed all of my Genesis you know, CDs and vinyl and all his solo albums. And I've met the guy so many times now that, you know, when I go to a, a meet and greet these days, it's like, oh, hi. Like, he recognizes me. It's kind of freaky. Um, but this this is a fantastic show, and it's an amazing set list, too. It has, you know, Dance on a Volcano, Dancing with the Moonlit Night, Carpet Crawlers, The Musical Box, Afterglow, Know What I Like, Supper's Ready, Firth or Fifth, Los Sandos. It's all that classic stuff. And uh, there's also uh, some special guests that appear on this. There's Ray Wilson, who had sung uh, with Genesis back in the mid to late 90s during the Calling All Stations era. So it's cool that that Genesis connection really runs deep with this release. Uh, Royna Stelt uh, from the Flower Kings appears on this. And uh, John Wetton also sings on a track as well, which is pretty dang cool. Now, Steve has done a whole bunch of Genesis Revisited live albums. He's done one at Hammersmith. There's this one. There's one in Liverpool. There's a whole bunch of them, and uh, this is the first one that's been given the vinyl treatment, like I said. Um, this comes in a gatefold sleeve, which has a pretty cool wide-angle shot of the stage taken from the back of Royal Albert Hall. Some very nice photos. I think the packaging of this was kind of a missed opportunity because this is a 3LP set. And the openings um, in the gatefold kind of allow for just one LP to fit. So putting in two is, uh, is quite tight. It's quite snug. And I'll just take out one of the records and show you what it looks like. Comes on standard black vinyl with uh, nice custom black labels with the track lists. There were some companies that were offering colored exclusive press uh, pressings that were quite limited, but I think the cost of those was almost in line with getting it like from the UK. So I figured I'd just go the best possible cost efficient way by just getting a standard black version. And also included uh, was a CD copy of it, which I don't have in the sleeve because I do already own it. But we do have a little insert here which has a really beautiful live shot. Love that um, blue and kind of pink color scheme. It matches so well. Opens up. We have pictures of Steve and his backing band. Some more live shots and also some pictures of the special guests that appeared. And then here is the back with more photos and some liner notes. Really awesome stuff. Who knows, maybe if we'll get more uh steve hackett live releases on vinyl in the future but until then um i am quite excited to give this a spin really really awesome stuff and then we get to the big kahuna of this clip and these are all records that i got from youdiscovermusic.com they are a online music retailer i don't buy from them often simply because their shipping prices are quite exorbitant like nine dollars a record i don't think so 
but with it being the 4th of July, there's usually sales going on. And I think the sale that they were running uh, also offered like a free shipping option. So that's always nice, free shipping. That's why if there's a sale that involves spending over a certain threshold and getting free shipping, I'm all for it. But here's the thing. These records were nothing. Zero dollars, completely free. Didn't pay any tax, didn't pay shipping, completely free. Now, coincidentally, there were some albums that I kind of had my eye on, some artists that I really like that I don't have on vinyl, as well as some stuff that I personally have never listened to, but for free, it's worth the risk. It's worth the excursion of digging into some new territory. The first one I'm gonna show you is actually one that I had sitting in my Discogs cart, and I was just gonna get it whenever. And if you saw, I believe it was in my last vinyl haul video, or it might've been the one in May, um, I got the greatest hits released by this particular guy. So I figured I'd seek out some full length studio albums. And that is Bob Seger and the Silver Bullet Band, Night Moves. This of course features the title track, Night Moves. Uh, Main Street, which is one of my favorites. Really, really solid album. Here's the backside. And then it comes in a printed inner sleeve with lyrics on this side and a picture of Bob up there. And this record comes on a purple capital label, which is quite cool. So I figured I'd uh, dig my way deeper into some Bob Seger. And next up is an artist that I have a lot of respect for, and I absolutely love um, his crooning style, but I, didn't, I, I don't have any records of this particular guy. I feel like that's sacrilege because I'm from Jersey. Uh, but also, there's a bit of a deep connection uh, with this particular guy because my grandmother, God bless her soul, was a huge, huge fan of this guy. And that being Old Blue Eyes himself, Frank Sinatra, A Swingin' Affair. This is a 60th anniversary pressing. This album first came out back in 1957. So um, the Sinatra estate, along with Universal Capital, put out this pressing. I'll show you guys the back. And it comes on a black capital label there, as you see. So yeah, this is my first piece of Sinatra vinyl. I've been meaning to get, um, what's it, Ultimate Sinatra? That's the recent compilation. It's the bluish one. I've been meaning to get that for some time. I think Target has an exclusive colored version of that. I still have to get it. But I figured for free, might as well. He's one of the greats. And then we have another New Jersey native, and that is Bon Jovi Lost Highway. I wouldn't go as far as to say I am the biggest Bon Jovi fan. I really love the 80s stuff. You know, the first couple records are just fantastic. Slippery When Wet, fantastic stuff. And then, like, in the 2000s, they kind of started to go down a little bit of the country rock kind of route. You know, they kind of... I feel like Bon Jovi suffers through that thing of trying to stay relevant and modern throughout whatever the musical climate is. So that's where I kind of lose them. But when it comes down to collecting artists for me personally, I'm a bit of a completist and I need to get everything. So I figured for free, I might as well <laughs> show you guys the artwork. Nice photo collage on the printed inner sleeve here with lyrics. And I, I do have to say, I do love the custom label there with the highway, with the car going down. I think that's really, really cool. So that's Bon Jovi. And next up is a breakout artist, I would say. He was in one of the biggest bands of the 80s, and then they broke up. He went solo, became a massive solo artist, and I don't have any solo albums of his. I have some albums of the band that he was in, but not solo. Sting, Mercury Falling. This came out back in 1996. Actually, is it 1990, 1996? There's two dates on here. I'm not too huge when it comes to Sting's solo stuff. I know some of like the bare bones hits, uh, but in terms of anything deeper beyond that, not so much. So this will be a bit of a fresh listen. And plus I can dig on Sting's style. You know, you really can't go wrong with his bass playing, his vocals and everything. Show you guys the vinyl. Nice custom labels there. And the last one that I got is actually an artist that I personally have never, ever 
listen to. And for free, might as well. This is Pete Yorn, Arranging Time. Now, before I pull the trigger on this, because granted, look, it's free, it's worth it. Um, I went on Apple Music just to listen to some clips, and I, I enjoyed what I heard, kind of in the vein of, like, alternative pop singer-songwriter type stuff. It's, it's stuff that I can dig into. Here's the back cover. And this also comes with a nice little download card. Printed inner sleeve as well. And to kind of hark back to the Bob Seger album, Purple Capital label, which is quite cool. I believe Capital started using this label variant in like the 80s. So I think this is probably where they left off at in terms of using that label. So it's cool that they still utilize that on, um, on some more recent releases of artists on their roster. But, uh, but yeah, but for all those albums, for the sheer price of nothing, you really can't go wrong. All right, so here is another new release that just came out this past Friday on July 10th, and I just now received it on Tuesday. Uh, came in from Bull Moose, and that is the newest album from Margot Price, and the album is called That's How Rumors Get Started. Uh, Margot Price is an artist that first appeared on Jack White's Third Man Records label, since that is how I first became aware of her, and she just recently signed to Loma Vista, and this is the first album that she's doing for that label, and uh, she's very much much in the country folk vein with a slight twist of like Fleetwood Mac. I think that's the best way to describe it. She is incredibly talented. Um, I already have her second album, All American Made, which was released on Third Man in my collection, and I was quite pleased with that, and I decided to pull the trigger on this. Now, this right here is the indie record store version, which um, I give many props to Bull Moose for offering pre-orders on indie record store exclusive pressings, which I think is quite cool. And what makes it the indie record store version is that it comes with a bonus seven inch of two bonus tracks which is quite cool comes in its own custom kind of die cut uh sleeve and we also have a sort of poster kind of insert with the album artwork on this side and then we open it up we have uh some photographs taken from the studio as well as lyrics to all of the songs and then I'll show you guys the record itself, which comes on a rather standard kind of Loma Vista label. And to still kind of tie it in with Third Man, uh, this was actually pressed at a Third Man Pressing in Detroit. So that whole Third Man thread is still kind of there, even though she is not on the label currently. But um, I am quite excited to dig into this album, and I still have yet to get her first album. I really need to kind of round off my Margot Price collection by doing so. But nonetheless, very excited to give this album a spin. Margot Price, that's how rumors get started. All right, so here are two brand new releases that are actually coming out tomorrow on Friday, July 17th. I received them today on Thursday the 16th. I bought these off of bullmoose.com, and uh, that's the great thing when it comes to buying new releases from Bull Moose. There's always the slight chance that you will receive them a day or so early before release date, which is pretty cool. First up is the newest album from Kansas. Uh, this album is called The Absence of Presence. This comes after their last album from a couple years back called The Prelude Implicit, which I think thoroughly enjoyed and i have heard nothing but great things about the singles and the tracks that have dropped leading up to this album's release i haven't given them a listen because when it comes to like listening to singles and tracks you know that drop leading up to an album's release you know if it's an album that i'm kind of skeptical on getting i will listen to the single or the drop tracks just as like a sort of testing ground to see if i'm willing to get it but in the case of like Kansas, where I absolutely love this band and I will basically get anything that they put out, um, it's just a case of I buy the record and I listen to it all whenever it comes out. So I absolutely love the artwork here. Folds out like that, which is really cool. We have a nice skatefold sleeve with some individual band photographs there and some credits. We also have a insert here which has the lyrics to all the songs which is quite nice 
And of course, since it's from Bull Moose, they offer pre-orders on indie record store exclusive pressings. And that's, of course, what I went after. Uh, this comes on kind of sort of green vinyl here. And uh, this pressing is limited to 500 copies. So I really wanted to jump on getting a rather cool limited colored variant of this. And uh, I'll show you what's really cool in terms of the fourth side of this pressing. And I'm sure you're probably guessing what that is already, since you kind of know what to expect if there's only three sides of music. So you have the third side here, and then you have a nice special etching right here. I'll try to show it in the light so you can make it out. Which is very, very cool. Cannot wait to give this album a spin. And then the next record is actually a reissue. And this is the first time this album has ever gotten a reissue. Um, it's a David Bowie related sort of project. And that is the second album from Tin Machine. Now, Tin Machine was a band that Bowie was in alongside Reeves Gabrels and uh, Hunt and Tony Sales. And um, basically kind of Bowie getting back into his sort, sort of more rockier kind of roots after he went full 80s and kind of pop and commercial. Uh, it was kind of a sort of return to his roots with this kind of band. And um, this act, honestly, this album is not one that I've particularly I've never listened to before. I have the first album and I've listened to it a few times and I quite enjoyed it. And um, I think it's cool that they're giving this album a reissue. Maybe they'll do the first album. Not quite sure. Uh, what's really cool with this is that uh, Music on Vinyl put out this reissue uh, limited to 10,000 copies numbered and it comes on silver vinyl, which I will show you. And just for the sake of showing, I got copy number 1,904. And uh, what's really crazy is that um, when this first got listed on Bull Moose, um, I placed my pre-order and then I noticed that they weren't taking any more pre-orders. And I thought maybe they weren't supposed to take any and my order would get canceled. So I contacted them and I just asked and they said, yeah, yours is still being honored. We just couldn't take any more because I guess maybe that there was a cap on how many copies they could get. So I thought that was pretty cool that I still got my hands on it comes with a nice insert full of band photographs and all the lyrics here and here is the vinyl itself which comes on silver vinyl very very cool so yeah um i think it's cool that we're getting these tin machine uh albums now because there was a lot of talk in like th the forums and such that like the next Bowie box set that we were going to get was going to be like a tin machine kind of box set because that that seems the most logical since it follows the 80s stuff so not quite sure if there's any loopholes in terms of like licensing and copyrights and such but it is cool that we're seeing this stuff get out into the market and we shall see if maybe they'll do the first album but until then definitely excited to give this one a listen as well all right, so this was an absolutely colorful vinyl day today, uh, starting off with REO Speedwagon's The Hits. Now, this compilation came out back in 1988, brings together all of the band's hits, and uh, it was this compilation that basically was sort of my gateway drug into the world of REO Speedwagon, and I loved what I heard so much upon listening to this that it made me dig deeper into their discography. Now, in terms of recent vinyl pressings, there's a couple of colored pressings uh, that were done by Friday Music. This is one that um, Epic Records had put out just this year. Uh, but what's interesting is that this is the Walmart exclusive pressing, and I did not become aware of this pressing until I saw someone on Facebook post about it. So I immediately went to my local Walmarts. Uh, they didn't have it, but I ordered it online, got it delivered to the store, and I was able to snag it. Uh, comes with a printed inner sleeve. Picture of the band there. We have some credits here. Wait till you guys see the vinyl. Check this out. So this is on clear vinyl with black and white splatter. Look at that. That is absolutely gorgeous looking. Really, really solid. And I definitely cannot wait to be uh, giving this one a spin. And then next up is actually an album that's kind of been out for a little while. I didn't jump on it when it first came out. Um, and I mainly picked this up kind of solely for the colored vinyl. And also, I really want to give this album a shot. 
and that is The Who's self-titled album, which came out um, this past year. I'm not the world's biggest Who fan, uh, but to those um, that I know that are big Who fans, they spoke very highly of this particular album. And this is a marbled colored pressing, which I'm going to show you in a bit, and I got a very good deal on it. So, um, You Discover Music uh, is doing a 25% off sale all uh, throughout, I think, to the end of July. You get 25% off everything in the store, and I came close to getting it, getting this as part of that sale. And right before I was ready to place my order, I was like, you know what, maybe I'll just wait off another couple days or so or a week, you know, just see how I feel about it. And then I get an email back from You Discover Music saying, hey, this is still in your cart. Here's an additional 20% off. So 45% off later, I snagged this thing. And I, I came out to like 16 bucks, which is absolutely not bad at all. And this is also a limited numbered pressing as well. Uh, this is limited to 3,000 copies, and I have copy number 2,276. Comes in a printed inner sleeve here. And here is the vinyl. Check that out. So it's like a marbled red, white, and blue colored vinyl. It looks absolutely sick. It's amazing looking. It's just gorgeous. Um, a piece of art, if anything. But I uh, definitely am excited to dig into this album and uh, see what the hype is all about. And then, now this is not exactly colored vinyl, but this is one of the big, big highlights of this entire vinyl haul. Now, if you are in the YouTube vinyl community, one of the channels that I'm sure you have heard all about is The Vinyl Guru. And her channel has been climbing the reins of the YouTube vinyl community. She's, do she's doing absolutely tremendous for herself. She's only been in like the YouTube circuit for a couple of months and she's almost at 2000 subscribers. It's absolutely insane. Wealth of knowledge, very, you know, wide music tastes, you know, an all around cool person. Um, I did her uh, match game uh, segment on her channel. She had me on as a guest and that was a lot of fun to do. And while talking, um, on uh, Facebook, we, you know, she mentioned that she did her own music and I have music of my own. And so, of course, we're talking about each other's original stuff. And um, turns out she has a vinyl pressing of her own work. And of course, I, you know, we discussed what the price would be and whatever. And so PayPal her the money. And sure enough, here it is in my collection. Now, she goes under the name Madam X. And uh, this single is called Firewalks, which is backed with What Have We Done? And of course, as you can see, uh, she did sign it for me. It says, a true warrior to the craft, love Madam X, which is absolutely awesome. Really cool cover art. And inside of the outer sleeve was this little <laughs> envelope, which has my name on it, and this little, like, Madam X seal, which I tried very hard to not completely ruin. And let's see. All right. It opens up like that. And she included a little handwritten note as well. It says, you are divine, honey. Sam and you are just perfect for each other. Sam, of course, being my girlfriend. Very, very, very nice. And I'll show you guys the record itself. Comes on black vinyl with nice custom labels which basically invert each other on the flip side, which is really cool. Very, very awesome. Cannot wait to play this. And also, side note, this is going to sound completely weird, but this smells really good. <laughs> I think she must have sprayed some perfume or something in it before sh shipping it out, and it smells very, very nice. So thank you very much, Christina, a.k.a. Ivano Guru. This is going to be hitting my turntable very soon. All right, so here is something completely left field out of what I normally listen to. I have proclaimed my uh, 
my admiration for this particular artist. Uh, she is really killing it at such a young age. And I've been holding off on getting this particular release for a couple of reasons, which I'll get into. But it was just like the right price and the right time. Uh, this was marked down on Amazon to around $11.00. And um, I basically had enough points built up on my Amazon store card to get this for literally nothing. I think I paid maybe a dollar and change out of pocket. And that is Billie Eilish, Don't Smile At Me. This is her debut EP. Um, I do have her full length album, which I thoroughly enjoyed. So I figured I might as well be a completist and get the EP. Now, the reason why I was holding off on this was because um, there was an FYE exclusive pressing, which came on clear vinyl that I was really hoping to get since I do work at an FYE. And I remember, I think the last time I saw it at the store was around uh, Christmas time. And it just was a case of any time we got them in, they would sell out instantly. And I meant to get myself a copy when we got them in and I've been waiting since then for it to come back and it just has not come back so I figured I'd just get the standard version but then again the standard version is equally as cool as the clear vinyl version because it does come with the printed inner sleeve here with the lyrics and artwork but it also comes on red vinyl which is very nice so it's cool that there is also a lot more going for the standard release rather than getting the exclusive version so you're still getting it on colored wax with nice yellow and red labels which is quite cool and uh definitely uh, quite interested to see how this differs uh from her full-length debut and uh, just a really cool uh modern sort of I, I guess you can say it's almost like alternative pop maybe because she's not fully pop she works in some darker elements and her sound is distinctively different but nonetheless very talented and i cannot wait to dig into it billy eilish don't smile at me all right, so we're going to wrap this haul up on a real banger. This is something I have been expecting the entire month. This is probably the most anticipated vinyl find of this month, and it finally just came in, and it's a very nice way to wrap things up. And it is that right there. The White Stripes Distill 20th Anniversary Companion Set. Uh, this came out through Third Man's Vault Subscription Service. This is package number 44. It's been 20 years uh, this year since the White Stripes released their sophomore album, Distill. And like they did uh, last year with the first album, they did this nice little companion book style set, which brings together all kinds of good stuff. We have an LP of various demos and non-album singles that came out around the time, as well as B-sides. And then there's also a live show from the magic stick a dvd of some uh, filmed shows along with a nice book it is packaged absolutely beautifully very similarly to the um the package from last year for the first album opens up right here and uh inside here is a pocket for the book and right in the front there we have an outtake uh from the album cover uh photo session and i'll show you guys the vinyl as well before we get into the book uh, this is the uh, the studio LP, which comes pressed on white vinyl. Nice custom labels there. And then we also have the live LP, which I will show you. They all come in nice color-coded uh, inner sleeves, so you know which one is what. There's the live LP. Red and white vinyl, which other color would it be? Along, alongside black. And then I'll show you guys the book, which is very nice, nicely put together. Comes out like this. And here we have another outtake from the photo sessions along with the back side here. There's Jack, opens up. We have a handwritten uh, press release by Jack uh, describing the album. Got all the tour dates, uh, handwritten lyrics. There's some pictures uh, of the band rehearsing at uh, Jack's house in Detroit, which was, I believe, where the album was also recorded as well, which is pretty cool. More outtakes. And then we have a whole bunch of live shots and gig flyers right there. Really cool stuff. There's Jack wearing the jacket on the back of... Uh, Iggy and the Stooges Raw Tower, which is pretty cool. 
and then there's all the contents there. So overall, a beautifully designed package. Um, I'm sure they're probably going to be giving the other albums this kind of treatment with various 20th anniversary releases. Uh, definitely cannot wait to give it a spin, and it's a very nice way to wrap this haul up. White Stripes Distill 20th Anniversary Companion Set. So there you guys go. That is my vinyl haul of all the records that I acquired within the month of July this year in 2020. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead, give it a like, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support this channel, be sure to check me out on Patreon. See you guys in the next video. And most importantly, keep the records spinning.